Welcome, Magnus here, and today we're going to talk about what modes on the R5 give you the best low light performance. So, yep, if you're liking these tips, I'm, I'm hitting you with a bunch. So to definitely hit subscribe and I'm going to share with you today what recording modes will actually give you better low light performance at high ISOs. What I did was to explain this test, I took my R5 and there are three good quality recording modes or resolutions in the R5, 8K, 4K HQ and 4K standard. Okay, so those are the, the best resolution modes on the R5. I didn't test the 1080p at this point because I thought that these would be the best example to test out for low light. I believe that ISO noise, especially in higher ISOs, is based partially based on the resolution that you're recording. The bigger your resolution, the smaller and less prevalent the noise will be. Now, yes, the, the A7S R3 is like a 12 megapixel sensor, and many believe that you'll get better low light performance because it doesn't have that many megapixels and each pixel can absorb more light because it's, it's bigger, it absorbs more space. However, I don't agree with that completely because a sensor size in total, that sensor is going to gather the same amount of light no matter how many pixels that you have because it covers the same area. That's why I'm not I'm not one to buy into the whole thought of like less megapixels will give you better low light performance. I just don't believe that. I'm gonna show you with the R5 the different recording modes and how the noise affects them. So what I did was several different ISO tests and I recorded just a face shot and then I kind of zoomed in on them with 4K standard, 4K HQ and 8K. And these are all recorded in IPB light. Now, what you're seeing here is 4K HQ ISO 100, 8K ISO 100, and 4K standard ISO 100. Now, in this recording, all three shots should look clean. They should pretty much be flawless. You shouldn't have any noise issues. Looking at this shot, at all three shots, when you're just doing just a regular recording, sure, you get more detail in 8K than 4K HQ, and then, of course, 4K standard is the least amount of detail. But because this is a full shot and you're really paying attention to what's going on in screen, there is no noticeable difference between these shots, unless you're pixel peeping, of course. So if you're trying to get your point across, even 4K standard works. And all of these were recorded in C-Log3 IPB light. So none of them are color graded because I really wanted to see what the image captured looks like before you begin your grading tweaks. And I didn't want any grading to actually degrade what you guys are seeing here. So three shots looks fine. Now, I also did ISO 100, but I zoomed in 400% to like a dark corner in the room during those shots. And it's the same three cameras. And what you'll see here is that minute macro blocking in the 4K standard, somewhere around here, I could see some like macro blocking that happens in the darker area. Then in the 4K HQ, very subtle, but I could kind of see macro blocking as well. Again, I think it's because I'm using IPB light. So it's, it's doing a great job regardless. And you wouldn't notice it on that full shot that I showed you. But there is some there that doesn't really have much to do with ISO, but I just wanted to point it out. However, 8K IPB light, I cannot see any noticeable macro blocking because the resolution is so high. So when you record in that higher resolution IPB light, you get a great looking image for what you're recording too because you have such a high resolution. So I felt that was important to mention even though it has nothing to do with ISO. Moving up, I kicked, cranked up the ISO to 6400. On these shots, I can pretty much say that all three shots at ISO 6400 are usable. There, there's some noise in all of them. And I'd say at this point, I could see that 4K standard is still a bit worse, but it's barely noticeable as far as noise and 6400 on the R5, you should be more com more than comfortable to use in any of these scenarios. Now looking at ISO 6400, 400% each of these shots, 
you can see that there's significantly more noise in the 4K standard, in the ISO 4K standard, 6400. It's just a lot grainier here. Now, 4K HQ is still looking pretty clean. So oversampling that sensor does have an effect on your ISO performance. Now, the AK, there's slightly more detail. The noise is a lot more spread out, but it's a lot smaller. And what seems to happen is, yeah, it looks like there's more dots of noise, but you get a lot more detail as well. I see some shadow area here that you really can't see here. And these were taken pretty much with the same lighting, all three shots. So I can pretty much see more, more detail around here. I can make out more details around the door hinge that are just in the 4K HQ. They just kind of seem like, like smooth or blended out. Because again, it's still a downsampled AK footage, so it just kind of like blends the footage together, the ISO performance together. But you get more of the pure ISO performance off the AK. So AK, you still get a little bit more detail in that image when you down convert it to 4K too. So would it be noticeable once everything's at 100% and not zoomed in at 400%? No. But if you're going to crop into your image for whatever reason, you'd get a much better performance in 8K. And if you don't, you still have a slight edge on 8K. So 12,800. Now from this initial shot, I can tell that, that the noise is definitely starting to pick up on the 4K standard. However, in my opinion, it's still usable, especially when it comes to whatever you're trying to do or, or struggle through in a low light scenario. 8K ISO 12,800 looks great. 4K HQ 12,800 also looks great. The R5 is a low light beast, but let's pixel peep. They all looked great when it was the 100%, but when you zoom in 400%, the amount of grain that's present on the 4K standard is almost looks unusable from this close. But remember, far, it's, it's fine. 8K ISO 12,800 not bad at all totally usable there's more grain on the 4k hq 12800 and it's more prevalent where as i as i said before 8k 12800 the grain is much finer so you get a lot more detail in this shot than you do off of this shot let's move on to the last one 51200 is as high as you can go from iso for video and these are what the three shots look like when you're grading i would imagine that the noise is going to stand out more so you would have to put some noise reduction into this footage but looking at all three shots initially i'd say at this point 4k standard is not usable there's a lot of grain like in my hair on the top of my hairline and i could see it in my eyebrows and it's just kind of like and on my shirt it's everywhere the 8K ISO 51,200. The grain is noticeable. However, the shot, in my opinion, is surprisingly usable. And the 4K HQ, same. It's, it's noticeable. It's a little bit more smoothed out. It's, it's, it's more smoothed out because, again, it's just downsampling. But it's still definitely a usable shot. So I'm impressed. Now, now let's do the ugly pixel peeping, which is going to explode this comparison and really get you to notice what's bad and what's not. So this is 400% each shot. And, and remember, the AK is only 200% because it's already large. 4K standard 51,200. There's a crazy amount of noise. And again, I don't know what YouTube compression is going to do, but 51,200 on 4K HQ looks, again, bigger noise kind of smoothed out but the noise is larger the 8k 51200 has again the, the noise levels are smaller so you do still get a lot more detail in this grainy image anyway versus what you had off of the 4k hq and now the reason that you see some of these shot this like shot moving is because my my camera had lens had focus breathing and when it would focus it was kind of moving that that perspective in and out. So all in all, what does this mean? What does this mean? It simply means that recording off of your R5, you'll get better noise performance when it comes to ISO, or in other words, better low light performance if you're recording 4K HQ or 8K. It's slight, but you still get 
better performance when compared to that of 4K standard. And if you want the absolute best, your best bet is recording 8K in the best bit rate it could possibly record because then you will get the cleanest looking image during low light struggle situations. So anyway, I had a lot to share with you today. So thank you for staying, sticking around, getting all the tidbits and uh, let me know what you thought was beneficial in this video. And it was always a pleasure. Now, if you want to see more of my content, definitely check out the stuff that I've got on the side right here. And as always, you'll make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. Hit that like button too if you like this type of stuff. See you guys later.